talking about checks. It's one of the harder problems in the set, which we're not sure if anyone's going to solve. But it's an implementation heavy problem. The theory is not too challenging. So it's a problem about the game of checkers, which if you haven't played it before, it's played on an 8x8 board, something like chess. There's only two types of pieces. So I've shown white pieces and green here, and there are these small ones which are called men, and the bigger ones are called kings. Uh, all the pieces move diagonally, so like that or like that. Uh, the men only move towards the opponent's side of the board, so the white ones will move up, the black ones will move down. Kings can move in the four diagonal directions, so this one can move that backwards or forwards. And a few other rules, so on your turn you can either just move a piece one space diagonally, or you can jump over one of your enemy's pieces. So for example this piece can jump over that piece to there, and that captures the piece so it's removed. And when you do a jump you can also carry on jumping. So for example, if this piece moves here, then this king can jump from there to there and carry on jumping to there and to there, if it wishes. And finally, when a piece is moved to the uh, far, a normal man is moved to the far row, it gets promoted to a king. Um, if it does it in the middle of a jump, it can't immediately jump backwards. It has to wait for its next turn before it can use its king ability. Uh, the problem is that you've been given a list of moves uh, which are possibly from the middle of a game, but you don't know what the board looks like. And you have to construct a possible starting board from which that sequence of moves would be legal. And you're guaranteed that such a board will exist. Um, there's one additional rule which is what makes the problem particularly challenging, which is that if you can jump on your turn, you have to jump, and you have to carry on jumping with that piece until it can't jump anymore. You don't have to make a globally optimal number of jumps, but you can't stop jumping while you have a choice. So, for example, if white had moved that piece in there, then black is not allowed to move this piece there in its turn because it has a jump option available, which is this one. So it has to jump, and then once it gets here, it has to carry on jumping to there and to there. So, how do we solve this? Uh, well, we can't search every possible board because there's far too many of them, but we can start inferring things from the moves we have. So if you see that a move occurred, you know that there has to be a piece where the move started and it has to move into an empty space. Similarly, if you see a jump, uh, you can infer that it, there was a piece of your color on the starting square and that you're removing a piece of the opponent's color on the next square. So you can start with an empty board and start filling in pieces as you infer them. And you can keep doing this, playing all the moves until they all make sense. Uh, the catch is this um, rule about forced jumps. So in this example, let's say the first move was that black moved there. Well, no, it's actually, let's start from this example first. Let's say white moved there, black went jump, jump, jump. The fact that you didn't jump there tells you that if you knew that there was a piece here, but you didn't know anything about the square, tells you that the square has to be occupied because it has to, you have to block the jump from being possible, otherwise it's illegal. So that'll tell you that there are some squares which have to be occupied, but you don't know what type of piece to put on them, whether it's black or white or a king or a normal man. And in fact, even just for the normal moves, you're not sure if something has to be a man or a king. The one of the tricks is that you can always just start by assuming that something is a man, because it has less options and therefore constrains you less. Sometimes you might see the same piece move later and move backwards and then you have to change your mind and go back and say, well, actually, this was a king. You go back to start and re-simulate things and check that they now make sense. But for these blocking pieces, you don't have to worry about them ever being kings because you'll never see them move, otherwise you would already have put the piece in somewhere. So let's look at this example now. Let's say the first move was from there to there. And then the second move was from there to there. The fact that white didn't jump over here tells you that there has to be a piece blocking here. Incidentally, the pieces I've drawn are all ones which you've inferred from moves that happened somewhere earlier. So that tells you there has to be a blocking piece here. Okay, what color is it? Well, maybe it was white. That's a problem because if it was, it could have kept jumping over to there. 
Remember, this piece is already moved, so that square is now available. And that's actually going to give you a contradiction because you're now saying that um, there should have been a piece here, but we know that the square is empty at the time. So part of the problem is also just keeping track of which squares you know have to be empty at particular times so that you don't try and insert a blocking piece into them. So we say there has to be a piece here because you've got this uh, black piece which we've inferred is here. So we've got a black piece here. And therefore, the fact that this piece didn't jump when this one moved means you now have to have some piece here. And again, you can recurse and try both options, whether it's black or white. In this case, it doesn't particularly matter, but you might have another piece here or here that then you keep recursing until you find a solution that works. Um, the, the trick is that even though it looks like there's 32 places on the board these pieces could be, the recursion can't really go that deep because it's very difficult to kind of construct the right patterns that you have to keep searching all the possibilities and they all don't quite work once you get very deep. So in fact, the solutions tend to run in almost no time at all. So I say it's a very tricky implementation challenge. We've got to get things right, like the promotion rules, the fact that pieces can't jump backwards after they've been promoted in the same turn, that you've got to first put things in as men and possibly upgrade them to kings and recompute it. There's a lot of corner cases to get right, but the idea is reasonably simple. And that's it.